Greetings, everybody. Uh, so, we're going to discuss how to simulate a nonlinear system in MATLAB. So, as an example here, we're going to use the Lorenz system, which is one of the most famous chaotic systems. Now, uh, for simulating linear systems in MATLAB, the process is very easy because there are already built-in commands. For example, you can use the SS command for um, state space models and define the system of linear equations, of linear differential equations as a state space model and very easily simulate it. But if the system is a nonlinear system, like the Lorentz system, you cannot simulate it uh, using the state space command. Okay. So let's see the system here. It has three states, x, y, and z. In some other papers, you, can, you may see them as x1, x2, and x3. And uh, we have three differential equations, and there are nonlinear terms involved. Uh, see, for example, here we have x multiplied by z, and here we have x multiplied by y. So these terms, which are uh, nonlinear terms, cannot be defined uh, in a state space system. So in order to simulate this system in MATLAB, what I need to do is first make a separate function where I define the three differential equations for this system. And then in another file, I'm going to define the system parameters. This system, for example, has sigma, rho, and beta, which are three parameters for the system. I'm going to define initial conditions, which is the starting point of the system. And I'm going to tell MATLAB to simulate the differential equations numerically. So let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, so I'm here in MATLAB. And first of all, the thing that I'm going to do is define the three differential equations. Okay, so I need to define them in a separate file, which is a function file. Remember, uh, the structure of the function format is function space. And here we define the function name, the inputs, and the outputs, right? And I'm going to save this uh, file using the same name as the function. So the function is called Lorenz model. And this file is also going to be saved as Lorenz model. Okay, so what do I do here? First, I begin by defining uh, sigma, sigma, rho, and beta as the global parameters. Uh, and the only reason I do that is so that I can define their values from the separate file that I'm going to use. Okay, now, how does MATLAB understand that I'm having three separate differential equations? It will basically understand this by how many lines I'm going to define in this dx function. dx is used to define the differential equations. Okay, so the state of the system is this, x1, x2, and x3. But this command is actually optional. I don't need to have it, to have it here. Even if I don't use this definition, MATLAB is also going to understand that I'm having three differential equations. Okay, so here I'm defining the first, the second, and the third differential equation. Okay, uh, these are just these formulas right here. I write them directly in my file. So the x1, let's see, is sigma times x2 minus x1. The second differential equation, uh, which is x2 dot, is x1 multiplied by r minus x3 minus x2. Okay, and the third differential equation is minus beta x3 plus x1 times x2. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm using the defini the uh, you know the notation of x1, x2, x3 instead of x, y, z. But the differential equations are exactly the same. So I define each differential equation separately, right? Alternatively, instead of that, I could have written something like that, and directly state that dx, so the derivative of x, is in matrix form the first, the second and the third differential equation. Okay, so I'm writing this in matrix form, uh, or alternatively, I can write each differential equation separately. So this is exactly the same, okay? But if I define each one of them separately, then I need to define the vector of the differential equations, which is dx1, dx2, dx2, I'm sorry, and dx3. So MATLAB here understands that I'm having three separate differential equations, and my states are x1, x2, and x3. Okay, so simple as that. Now, I save this file in my own folder, and now I need to have a separate function, a separate file, where we call upon this model and solve it numerically. Uh, so this is a separate file that I have. So let's see how it's written. 
Okay. See right here. I'm sorry. Let me arrange everything. I have clear to clear everything uh, from the previous simulation. I also have clear global to clear all the global commands. And then I have global S, R, and B. So this global command here appears in the original file and in the Lorenz model file. Okay, both of these files need to have this global function, okay, uh, this global call. And then I define the values of the three parameters. Okay. I define my initial conditions. So this is the starting uh, value of the Lorenz system, 0, 1, and 1. Nice. And then I have a specific MATLAB command used to simulate the system numerically. So I'm using the most standard one in MATLAB, ODE45. This is a specific method. I strongly advise that you take a look into the uh, MATLAB original uh, you know, uh, file for ODE45, and it has many information about this method. There are actually other ODEs, like ODE23 and some other techniques that have uh, small variations in between them. So I have ODE45 at the Lorenz model. Okay, so this is how I call this function right here. And I simulate it from 0 to 100 seconds with a step of 0 0.01. Okay. By the way, I need to tell you this. Uh, this is uh, the specific time intervals that MATLAB will return to me in a function, in a, a variable, I'm sorry. Internally, MATLAB uses use a variable step size. So no matter what you input here, internally MATLAB has its own uh, way of solving the system. Okay. And then the final option is uh, the initial conditions. Okay. So I call this thing and I save the results into T, which is the time, and X, which is the solution of the state. Now the system is uh, having, it has three differential equations. So obviously, if I run this command, let's see the result. So the result function, if you see right here, it has many, many lines. Okay, this corresponds to the simulation time, obviously. If I choose a more simu uh, higher simulation time, it will result in many more lines. But it has three columns. So, okay, obviously here, the first column is the first state. The second column is the second state. And the third column is the third state. Okay, so I can actually print this here. Of course, this is a very big time series. But this is a solution, okay? As you see it right here, first, second, and third states. And then I can simply use basic MATLAB plotting commands in order to plot the solution. Okay, so I have a code ready here. Let me plot the solutions. I plot them in several different ways. So uh, let's see them uh, one by one. So this is the solution of the system with respect to time. So you see the solution of the first uh, state x1, the second state x2, and the third state x3. Okay, and uh, the x-axis here represents the simulation time. I chose 100 seconds. Okay, so this is very nice. Okay, but we can also uh, choose to plot uh, the three states, not with respect to time, but with respect to each other, so that we can see how the three states change uh, as time progresses and, uh, you know, with respect to one another. And, of course, this results in the 3D graph that you all may have heard and have seen previously. Uh, this is the so-called Lorenz attractor. So this uh, represents how the three values change with respect to each other uh, in the so-called state space. Okay, so we see x1, x2, and x3 right here. Very nice, the very famous, you know, butterfly uh, winged attractor. Okay. And of course, apart from the 3, 3D attractor, we can also plot uh, 2D phase portraits. So we can plot x1 with respect to x2, x2 with respect to x3, and x1 with respect to x3, and get all the three individual phase portraits uh, for the chaotic attractor. Okay, so this is just a matter of a few lines of code. Okay, if you are very familiar with MATLAB, you will have no problem uh, plotting this 2D or 3D phase diagrams. Okay, so this is the way that we simulate nonlinear systems in MATLAB. And I'm going to also put a link in the description with a code that you can use. And any questions that you have, you can simply uh, write them in the comments. Okay, so thank you very much.